Well, guys, we made it. Week 12 did not disappoint in college football. No, it did not. And we got ourselves another crazy week. Oh, boy. Why don't we start on Friday night first? Let's start on Friday night in which Memphis and Houston had a game. I'm talking a sloppy, sloppy game. But it was a game in which Clayton Toon and this offense didn't really seem to get, you know, completely, you know, together for most of it. Um, they weren't in total sync. But the Cougs, they, they are now unbeaten in AAC play. They have cemented that they're going to the AAC championship. We already knew they were going. Strong defensive performance against Memphis. And you've won your 10th straight game. Now you just got to wait to see if you're going to host or not. Okay, Cougs? And then later that night, later that night, you know, a couple hours later, in fact, San Diego State took on UNLV, and this was a this was a game that was just dominated by Justin Rogers for UNLV, but ultimately in the end, you know, despite the fact that San Diego State's defense was clutch, despite the fact that Jesse Matthews was catching passes all over, you know, for the Aztecs as well, a bad bad offside that got missed by the referees ended up costing UNLV the game. It cost them the game. And there's, a, there's another case of this as well as we talk, as we go on down the line here to the other games and stuff like that. Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But San Diego State, I believe they are close enough to where they have locked up the Mountain West Western Division. I believe, they, I believe they're close to locking it up now, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check real quick. Um, but yeah, the, these two games really showed me that, you know, there was just, there, there was just, they're, they're not close yet, San Diego State is not, they just need to win one more game. We'll talk about that game when it comes down to it next week, uh, but San Diego State, again, offense has finally come alive, they really didn't have an offense for most of the season, but I'm glad they got, I'm glad they got something to together. I'm glad they got something together. I'm really glad for them. Um, so why don't we move on to noon. To noon Eastern on Saturday. Yes, I know. I know. There, there, There's a couple of these we gotta get through first. We gotta get through these blowout cupcake games first. We gotta get through those. Um, a Jordan Davis touchdown that was the highlights for Georgia as they crush Charleston Southern. Charleston Southern's not going anywhere this year, so um, you know this was this was nothing more than a beat 'em up for Georgia, and they're 11 and 0 for the first time in a long time. It's really good stuff there. For Mississippi State, we we're going to be looking at something real soon next week. Oh boy, Thanksgiving's about to get real lit. I mean, if you got Will Rogers t throwing for five touchdowns. You got this Bulldogs offense putting them 600 yards like that. Hoo boy! Hoo boy! The Egg Bowl is going to get real interesting. We'll talk about the other team in the Egg Bowl in a minute here. And last but not least in these early SEC FCS games that you know, people don't seem to like for some reason. I mean, it is what it is. It doesn't matter what you schedule these games in all honesty. But for Texas A&M, this was obviously an easy W. For you guys, you know, good job there. You can get back into the win column. But for Prairie View, we'll be talking about Prairie View with the other championship games. Congrats. You guys are going to the SWAC championship game. Thanks to Jackson State beating up on Alcorn earlier in the afternoon. Or, well, it actually was at the same time. Because both these games started at the same time. But yeah, good job for Prairie View. You've locked yourselves up a date going up to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. On December the 4th, 4 o'clock, Eastern, ESPN 2. Remember, we'll, we'll, be talking about, we'll be talking about this championship game for the SWAC along with the other conference championship games. That won't be for another couple weeks. So, that's just my spiel there. Um, Wake Forest, lost again. Yeah. Well, you have a guy like Kobe Pryor who really... Didn't even step up until today, running up all over this Deacon defense. What do you got? 
Clemson, you know, just keeping the offense for Wake Forest on the ground. I mean, they, they couldn't, I mean, Wake Forest wanted to take flight. They could never get off the ground. At Clemson now, Clemson, because of this victory, they are in it. They are in it in the ACC title race. Wake Forest still has to just win one game against Boston College, but now things are getting a little bit more intriguing. It gets a little bit more intriguing now with the way things are going here. And in one of the big games I, I we all had highlighted, I, I, I should have listened to the spread. I, I didn't think it was going to be like this, but when C.J. Stroud only had three incompletions, he was 32 of 35, he threw for 432, six TDs. Now this is Buck's wide receiver, the Buckeyes wide receiver trio, Smith and Najiba, Olave, and Garrett Wilson. I mean, they just tore apart the Spartan secondary. They tore them apart. This was not even close, man. 50 something to 7. 59 to 7, I think. I don't remember. I don't. I'm looking. Let me look at it. Yeah, 56 to 7. Excuse me, not 59. I don't know where I got 59 from. Just absolute domination. Michigan State, your CFP hopes are dead. We knew one of these teams' CFP hopes were going to die. Unfortunately, for Michigan State, not only I don't think Kenneth Walker is coming near the Heisman, I think, think it actually might be going to Stroud now, in all honesty. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't think he deserves it. I don't think he or Bryce Young deserves it. But, I mean, my goodness, Ohio State, this offense lit him up. Lit up Sparty. Okay, will we see the same thing next week against Michigan? We'll talk about Michigan in a moment here, but my goodness, this was this was not what I had in mind when 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 I said a top ten matchup, blowout, beyond blowout. The other the other game I had highlighted for this early window was Iowa State and Oklahoma, and this was truly. Truly an ugly, ugly victory for Oklahoma. I don't think they even had a hundred passing yards in this game against Iowa State. But Iowa State, you know, three turnovers. Brock Purdy like had two of them at least. I know two of them were picks, but I mean one of them, one of them was just really, really bad. One of them got scooped and scored too, I think. And I mean the turnovers again, I, I don't understand for Iowa State. They had so many opportunities to put Oklahoma in a bad position. They had some of the opportunities. And it just did not happen here. It just did not happen. Like, Oklahoma, they, they, did, they couldn't do anything on offense. It was a miracle they were even able to score. And yet, you, you know, Brock Purdy, being Brock Purdy, who turns the ball over like a turnover machine, just, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Like, Iowa State had so, so high expectations coming into the season, and yet, here we are, again, sitting here talking about a 6-5 and five Iowa State. That's not even the worst one. I mean, you got Texas sitting at 4-7. and seven. Yeah, I know, right? I know. Crazy stuff. Just insanity. Illinois and Iowa. I mean, I thought, I thought Illinois was going to upset Iowa based on the way things were going, but that Iowa defense came through. You pick off Brandon Peters twice. That that run game came through too. You know, just easy, easy, easy for Iowa in the second half. I mean, they only allowed they only allowed ten points in the second half, I think. But in the end, at the end of the day, you know, Iowa is nine and two. That that's what we can say here. Nine and two, Iowa. Yeah, I'll, I'll get on that. I will get on that train. Hawkeyes are still in it in the Big Ten West. And, I mean, there, there's got to be some things that are going to go their way. But, hey, this is this one is going to be... This, this final week is just going to be crazy for the Big Ten West. I can guarantee you that. Georgia Tech didn't even score against Notre Dame. They didn't score. Notre Dame put 500 yards on them. And... and, and Keep in mind, things happen today. 
Notre Dame is a lot of people were saying Notre Dame was out of it I was one of the few that said no they're not out of it yet and this is the type of this is the type of reason why if we get an all defensive CFP with teams like Georgia Cincy Notre Dame and Oklahoma State my god my god an all defensive I mean we're talking all four of these teams that just had you know complete defenses this year. I mean, I, I think I'd want to see a CFP like that where nobody can score touchdowns. You know, at, but Notre Dame, on the other hand, let's go back to Notre Dame before I talk about dream scenarios for the CFP. Put up 500 yards on Georgia Tech. I know this is Georgia Tech. I know this team is now 3-8. and eight, But my God. Unbelievable stuff there. Unbelievable, man. My goodness. My gosh, Notre Dame is back in it. Y'all thought, you know, we all thought that Notre Dame was out of it, but they're back, right back in it. Right back in this. Just like that. At 3.30, we got a, a few good ones here. We got a few good ones, uh, you know, you know, a couple of, couple of interesting games here. Yeah. And um, one of them was BYU-Georgia Southern. And I, I, I don't know what in the world the Cougs were thinking. They, but they are thinking something real good out here. Putting up 500 yards just like that. Took care of the Georgia Southern Eagles. And hey, BYU, you got you got you got one opportunity left to go to 10 and 2. I don't think BYU fans expected this at the beginning of the year. I don't think they were expecting almost a clean sweep of the Pac-12. You know, this year in in their five four about to be five games against the Pac-12. But um, we'll talk about the disaster that's USC next week when we talk about BYU-USC. Uh, I'm thinking BYU's getting the 10 wins, guys. It might be the Independence Bowl. It might be a New Year's Six. I don't know yet. But I, I really want BYU to be like, hey, we're knocking on the door for the New Year's Six. Can we get in? I want to get in. Let me in, BYU says. Michigan. Yeah, that, yeah, that offense was clicking. Uh, Donovan Edwards was the real star here. I mean, he had 10 catches for 170 yards. And I mean, this this Michigan team just this defense for Michigan was just on point once again. When you stop the Terps and Talia Tagbailoa like that, I mean, good God, we're we're gonna be in for a huge game next week. We're gonna be in for a huge one. I can guarantee you that. Oh boy, this is, that, that, this is, this is going to be crazy next week. It's going to be crazy. My goodness. Um, Nebraska at Wisconsin. The other game that I said, you know, I remember earlier when I was talking about UNLV getting screwed over. Yeah. A pass interference that was not called against Wisconsin, you know, ended up, you know, being the deciding factor. It looked, it looked as though if it was a pass interference, but... And this is me saying but because this also happened. Picks for Nebraska. Adrian Martinez threw two of them. You get ran all over by Braylon Allen. 229 yards for this man. You can't have that type of thing to happen. I mean, Nebraska's 3-8. and eight. Look, look, they're one of the best 3-8 and eight teams I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, it, like this team honestly could be 11 and 0, and I don't think anybody would have thought of that. But the way, but the way that they lose every week has just been—it's it, been fun to watch. I think I think we'll give them one more watch this year. We'll give Scott Frost and his boys one more good watch this year on Black Friday. So, Wisconsin, on the other hand. You guys are getting a real, real close to locking up the Big Ten West. You just need a couple more things to roll your way. And really, you only need one thing to roll your way, but we'll talk about that next week again. And for good old UTSA, how about the Roadrunners? They got a crazy final play that Frank Harris threw, got tipped off a UAB defender, and it won the Roadrunners the game. And that gave UTSA the CUSA West title you're going to the Conference USA Championship for the first time congrats UTSA you're undefeated still 
you should be ranked a little bit higher in my opinion too. Just a little bit, not too much. Again, you had some close games early in the season. I'm gonna, I'm, not, I'm also gonna hope that against you. Um, but man, UTSA, what a, what a great game. You know, unfortunately, you know, not probably nobody got to saw this game. But I mean, it is what it is. And I gotta tell you, UTSA in prime position to just go undefeated this year. I mean, there, there's still you know a couple tests remaining. My alma mater next week. And, Whoever they face in the CUSA championship, whether it be Marshall or Western Kentucky, Western Kentucky and Marshall have to duke it out next week to determine who will be going to the CUSA championship. Arkansas, Alabama, this was a big one. Huge, huge game. The SEC West could have been caused, you know, could have been sent into chaos if Arkansas won this game. But Arkansas did not win this game. They did not win this game. I mean, the Tide barely survived in this game. They barely survived. This game had over a 1,000 yards, a fake field goal touchdown pass by Arkansas to make it a 34-28 game at one point. But with Bryce Young throws five touchdowns, 500-plus yards, I mean, K.J. Jefferson <laughs> threw for three touchdowns as well. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Alabama just... It just had more in them. And I know there's also a call in this game that was also kind of bad. But it, at the end of the day, it, 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 it is what it is. We, 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 we're, we're getting the Georgia-Alabama. We're getting Georgia-Alabama. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to be able to feel. Um, you know, Alabama really doesn't look like a number two team in the country. They really don't. They really don't look like a team that's completely focused. They've been scraping by. I mean, you, you can call this game whatever you want to call this game. But, I mean, this was Alabama scraping by. I, I don't think this team, you know, I, I don't I don't think this team is going to be, you know, competing against Georgia if, if, they, if they can't, you know, play a complete game. Because, I mean, this was not a complete game. You can't allow... You can't allow this many yards against Arkansas. I don't know Arkansas is pretty explosive. But my goodness, you can't allow things like this. A fake field goal TD pass? What is this? I'm sounding like Nick Saban right now, but I mean, you know Nick Saban's probably just angry about this performance. You know he's probably angry. So there you go. Number one versus number two in the SEC Championship. However, things hold up, though. You know, we could still be number one versus number two in two weeks, but we don't know yet. We'll see what the committee says. I personally think Alabama should move down for next week, at least. I think that, that that's just my opinion, but it is what it is. Virginia and Pitt in the ACC Coastal game that determined the ACC Coastal title. And it was a duel. Brennan Armstrong came back. Kenny Pickett was balling. Both these guys had four touchdowns. But all of Kenny Pickett's touchdowns went to Jordan Addison. Real star of this game. Just snatched up one of these one of these touchdown throws from the Virginia defender at one point. And a 98-yard kickoff return for Pitt as well by Israel Abani Kanda. And I hope I say that name correctly. This, this propelled. This was one of the things that propelled Pitt to a huge, huge victory. Now they're 9-2. and two. They're going to the ACC Championship. They don't know who they'll be playing yet. Presumably it will be Wake Forest, but it could be Clemson. It could be NC State. I, I don't know yet. I really don't know yet. And speaking of NC State, yeah, guys, your dreams are still alive in the ACC. Your dreams are still alive. And a 30 and a 28 points second quarter really helped out. I mean, they blew out Syracuse. I thought Syracuse was going to give them more of a game than that because they are a tricky team. But mm -mm, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. And I got to tell you, it's, it's going to be a wild final week. Clemson has South Carolina next week. So NC State and Wake Forest, they're, they're going to have to do something. There's going to there's gonna be some kind of friction there. That's going to cause one of either Wake, NC State, or Clemson to go to the ACC Championship to take on Pitt. So we'll see what happens there. We will see. 
Baylor. Yeah, Gary Bohannon got injured. I think it was a leg injury. Skylar Thompson also got a leg injury in this game. But under the backup quarterback for Baylor, Shapin, you know, the, the Bears were able to take care of Kansas State. They held them to 10 points, kept everybody in check on that K-State offense. And Baylor's one step closer. They need something to happen next week, though, to get to the Big 12 championship. But they're one step closer. They're one step closer to getting a title. Speaking of a team that's wanting to get real close to something, how about those Cincinnati Bearcats? This was what we wanted to see. Dominant performance. This was what we wanted to see. You give up 66 yards passing? What is this? This isn't Madden. The, the, this is this is real life. I'm, I'm sitting here speechless looking at the stat line. I sat here speechless looking at the stat line earlier. I, I was like, wait, Tanner Mordecai only had 66 yards passing? Wait a minute. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, five touchdowns for Desmond Ritter. He threw for three. He caught one, and he ran for one. Cincinnati, my goodness. Y'all, y'all, legit. Can you say it? Can you say legitimate? That is what the Cincinnati team is. Legit to its very core. My goodness, that is a statement. One of those big statement wins you needed. Congrats, Cincy. You have at least a slot locked up going up against Houston in the AAC title game, but we don't know where it will be yet. So Cincinnati, you know, has to win on Black Friday. So we'll talk about all the Black Friday games and the Thanksgiving game as well. And of course Saturday, duh. Gotta talk about Saturday. Uh, it's pretty obvious. But yeah, Cincinnati, real happy for them. Real happy for them. And last but not least, we get to the late games. There wasn't a lot of late games here, unfortunately, this week. Um, Vanderbilt took on Ole Miss, and I mean, it was a stingy bandy attack. I mean, they, they, they kept Ole Miss on their toes. But I mean, when you still have Matt Corral throwing for 300 yards, I know he's leaving Ole Miss at the end of the season. But, you know, Ole Miss, they, they got it together. Obviously, the defense has improved. <laughs> It's, you know, early in the season, you know, but Ole Miss got it done. We're going to have a top 25 Egg Bowl. My goodness, that is going to be crazy. I didn't think it would be like that, but here we are with a top 25 Egg Bowl. I, I, I think I'd like to see that. I know y'all would. Well, why, don't we, why don't we get on it? I, I like that. Wouldn't y'all like that too? Man. I mean, the Egg Bowl is going to be weird. It's going to be a weird Egg Bowl. It's going to either be one of the ugliest games I've ever seen in my entire life, or it's going to be one of the most beautiful Egg Bowls I've seen in my entire life. We'll see. We will see, man. And Oklahoma State, you guys have locked up a Big 12 championship appearance. I know, right? Crazy stuff. Spencer Sanders did well. He, did another, he had another good game. You know, was it perfect throwing the ball, but I mean just efficient enough a touchdown running a touchdown passing but this texas tech team got stuffed no points for the red raiders none at all you know how many yards they had barely a hundred at one point you know before you know like their last drive they only had 85 they only had 85 the red raiders did uh, again Oklahoma State, my goodness, I, I I don't I don't think I don't think I've seen something like that in a long time, you know, just tenacious defense, just downright despicable defense, team effort by this Cowboys defense, team effort there. And last but not least, you already knew it was coming, Pac-12 chaos, the conference of cannibals. Because the Pac-12 has cannibalized itself once again. And y'all remember a couple years back when Oregon was on Saturday Night Football and they lost to Arizona State? Same thing happened here. Lost to Utah. Blown out by Utah. Tavion Thomas runs for three touchdowns. There were so many efficient drives by Utah where it was just, you know, just suffocating. 
suffocating, you know, this Oregon attack. They suffocated the run game. They got a kick return, or rather a punt return for a touchdown, 78-yard punt return, TD by Utah, to end off the to end off the first half. And I mean, it was 28 nothing at the half. 28 to nothing. My goodness, crazy stuff. And Oregon hasn't even locked up. Yo, they haven't even locked up the Pac-12 North yet. Yeah, guys, you messed up by not locking up the Pac-12 North. You messed up a lot. You messed up. You had to lock it up by beating Utah. And now you gotta play Oregon State next week. So we'll see. We'll see what Oregon can do next week because I'm not confident in Anthony Brown. I was never confident in Anthony Brown. If you if you think you were confident in Anthony Brown, you you should be checked out in a mental ward or something like that. My goodness. Thank you, Utah, for ending the Pac-12's hopes and dreams yet again. How many years is that now? Like six out of eight years that the CFP has been. This is why we don't need expansion. And I'll go into this last part here to wrap this up. The 12 team expansion model. I get it. I get it. I don't want it. I, I don't want it. I, I think, you know, if it were implemented this year, we could have two, you know, group of five, you know, group of five champs in because Utah's linked ranked lower than ETSA at the moment but at the same time I don't think there's 12 teams deserving at the FBS level at the FCS level it's fine I honestly think it's beautiful at the FCS level what they have with the 2014 playoff and we'll talk about the 2014 playoff tomorrow night and that'll be a back-to-back -back in conjunction video with some college basketball but, in the FBS, I just don't think there are more than four to six teams. Hell, sometimes even eight deserving teams, you know, ready to compete for a championship. I just don't think that there's eight teams. I don't think, I don't think you can find 12. Do you, can you find 12? Do I think Ole Miss should be competing for a championship? No. Do I think Baylor should be competing for a national championship at this moment? Hell no. No. If we're going off some of these teams that are ranked in the top ten, you know, right now, no. Michigan State, they just said, they just proved that they won't that they aren't even gonna be competitive like that. No, they got blasted by Ohio State. No. No. But what about the what about the other group of five conferences? Not particularly, not really. Come on, San Diego State has no offense. They they were able to get something together. They have no offense. Stop it. If you said San Diego State as one of the top six champions, I I think I would have believed you if they stayed undefeated. I don't think so now. Because that offense is so bad, and Fresno State exposed how terrible that offense is. UTSA has been sneaking by, you know, just 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 barely slipping by some of some of their opponents. You know, I mean, come on, Southern Miss barely. Southern Miss only has two wins on the year, barely getting by them, barely. See, it, see, and there's not even 24 deserving teams in the FCS either. So again, you know, I, I just don't think that all. And this is the same thing that happens to the FCS. We'll 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 see it tomorrow. We'll see it tomorrow too. Same thing happens. A lot of teams from like one or two conferences, maybe a third, will get like all the big bids. They'll get all the at-large bids if they you know get into the playoff. If they get into a larger playoff, like, 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 there would be like four Big Ten teams and four SEC teams in the playoff. If there were a 12-team playoff, I guarantee you that every year. Like this year would be the Big Ten West champion, Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State. I guarantee you that from the SEC. Obviously Georgia, obviously Alabama, maybe Ole Miss. 
you know, maybe even A and M. And then everybody else, it's a free for all. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. So I don't want a 12 team playoff. At least, at least it can be eight or 16. But that's all I really want is eight or 16. That's I don't need. I don't want the NFL style. I don't think we need that. And if they're gonna, the, the, the committee is going to approve that, you know, by the time December comes, because December is not too far away. Then I, I, I just don't want it. I, I don't want it. I don't need it. And, and I know, I don't know. Some people are like, oh well, you know, you know playoff expansion is good. I, I just don't think so. When has it really worked out like that for the FCS? There's still the top, like four or five teams. From the FCS, go to the championship every year. It's still the same thing. It's still the same thing. D2, D3, same thing. Same thing. The same teams are playing for titles every year. The same powerful teams are paying, playing for titles every year. So it just doesn't make any sense to me. Why we want expansion. I, 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 don't, I don't see it like that. To where we need 12. I could do 8, I could do 16. I've explained, you know, my thoughts on 8 and 16 before, you know, last year. I explained that last year around the same time. Whatever, man. Whatever. If it does go, then I'll, I'll just have to accept it. Like, I have to accept that there's a 17 game NFL season. I, I just have to accept that because we couldn't get it to 18 like I wanted to. Whatever, man. But yeah, that'll do it for this week. I'm glad we got through this week. I didn't think we were going to get through, but we made it, man. We made it. I'll see you all tomorrow to talk some FCS playoffs. I'll do my predictions for the first and second rounds. We'll talk about the third. I mean, not the third. The quarterfinals. We'll talk about the quarterfinals when we get to the Army-Navy preview. That will be in conjunction with those. Semifinals will be on the first Bowl Saturday preview, and then the championship will be its own separate video, of course, obviously. So, don't worry, FCS fans, I got you covered. I've been, I've been following the FCS this year. Don't, don't worry about that. Do not worry. But I'll see you all very, very soon with more content. Y'all take care. Have a good night, and I'll see you again soon. Peace, everybody.